So to assess the extents of compartments of the wrist, we're gonna have the patient relaxed on a pillow. We're using the high frequency hockey stick probe. The first landmark to find that's really important just to start orientating exactly where you are is Lister's tubercle. And you can see the Lister's tubercle pointing nicely there. Now, if we go um, medially on the wrist, we can get to extensor compartment two. Now, this is extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis brevis, and that's extensor compartment two. If we go round to the radial side of the wrist, now, this is where we can get quite a few anatomical differences and variations, but if we have a look here, we can see that we've got abductor pollicis longus, which is where the arrow is, and we've also got extensor pollicis brevis. And sometimes you just need to follow up and down. So extensor pollicis brevis is the small tendon on the right-hand side. And in this case, as we go distally, you can see that abductor pollicis longus actually has multiple slips, which is not uncommon and something to look out for. It's difficult sometimes to differentiate whether this is pathogenic or whether this is just normal anatomy. You can see the retinaculum going over the top. So extensor compartment one, extensor compartment two, and if we go back to Lister's tubercle, we see this little groove there, uh, which is the extensor pollicis longus, and it sits in its own little groove just to the side of Lister's tubercle. If we keep going, the next tendon there is extensor indices in compartment four, and also then we've got extensor compartment, in extensor compartment four, we've got extensor digitorum. Now, if we have a look on top of the radius, you can see it's got a nice thick retinaculum, which is normal, and you can see the tendons move as your patient wiggles their fingers. If we go to the next landmark, which is the scaphoid uh, sorry, which is the radial ulnar joint, so that's the distal radial ulnar joint, you'll see a little tendon on top of that, which is the little finger. So you can always just uh, get your patient to move just to assess that. And that's compartment five, which is extensor digiti minimi. Now, right over the side of the ulna um, is our last compartment, which is compartment six, and that is going to be the extensor carpi ulnaris. Now you can see it's got a nice thick retinaculum over the top and if we go back more proximally you can see that it sits in its own little groove just there on the side of the ulna and we can follow that down to assess the tendon. Now if we go back to our landmark and obviously at any point you can spin into longitudinal section for assess. Now let's go back to our landmark which is Lister's tubercle. Now there's two intersection syndromes that we need to be aware of. So let's start first of all with the first intersection syndrome, which is where extensor carpi, so extensor compartment one moves over the top. And you can see there moves over the top of extensor compartment two. And that's your classic intersection syndrome or sometimes called the proximal intersection syndrome. Now, the second one is the more distal intersection syndrome. So if we find Lister's tubercle, you can see EPL there. And if we follow EPL down, you'll see that extensor compartment three, which is EPL, goes over extensor compartment two. And that's where you can get this distal intersection syndrome. Now, going back to the Lister's tubercle, which is our landmark, there's two things we can do from here. The first thing I want us to do is to assess the scaphoid lunate ligament. We can see the nice dorsal scaphoid lunate ligament if we just slide more distally off Lister's tubercle and our eyes go underneath. We see what I think looks like the AC joint, which you can see there. So look for any fluid there, any thickening of the capsule. And we also do a dynamic test at this point. So it's important to do it passively and you just move the patient's hand into ulnar deviation. And as long as those bones don't open up, then we can say that that's a stable scaphoid lunate joint. Next thing we do is we go back up to Lister's tubercle, which again is our landmark. And then if we just spin on Lister's tubercle, then we can end up with a classic sort of view of the wrist joint which is where we can see the radius on the right-hand side of the wrist. You can see the lunate bone in the middle, and then you've also got your capitate bone there. 
And what we can do is we're looking very carefully for any synovitis or any joint effusions, and we can individually assess these joints. It's also really important to look out for any erosions in the joints, because obviously the wrist can be a region where you get systemic inflammatory problems such as rheumatoid arthritis. Mm -hmm.